Get ready for a new take on an old tale about Dick Grayson's first outing as Robin alongside the Batman. Their first challenge? Recover a top secret file stolen by Two-Face. Let's find out how we did in our review of Batman and Robin Year One, Number One from DC Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Batman and Robin Year One, Number One. You know, let's, let's just not mince words. Batman and Robin Year One number one is perfectly good. Writer Mark Wade infuses young Dick Grayson with all the zeal and charm of a kid having the time of his life, while Bruce Wayne grapples with keeping Dick's zealous energy in check. But here's the thing, haven't we seen this somewhere before? Doesn't this all sound very familiar? Haven't we read comics just like this more than once? The answer is yes, so the question is where does this one stand out? Well, let's find out. So let's just jump right into the issue and then we can figure out where we need to go from here. Batman and Robin Year One number one begins with Bruce Wayne quietly talking with his butler Alfred about Bruce's new ward, Dick Grayson. At this moment in the timeline, Dick is aware Bruce is Batman and he's accepted the offer to become Robin. But Dick has yet to make his public debut in Gotham City. Tonight is the night, especially when they see a bat signal flashing up on the sky. Writer Mark Waid sets the tone of the story that says this isn't some edgy, grim, dark, updated for modern audiences version of the original dynamic duo. Bruce's serious uncertainty contrasts Dick's giddy excitement to foil crime in the big wide world. The tone of their dialogue is straight and entirely wholesome while mature enough to not sound outdated or corny or campy along the lines of something that you would see in the Silver Age as an example. It feels modern but it feels classic at the same time. Well, it turns out Commissioner Gordon is the one who activated the bat signal that brings the dynamic duel running. Batman makes his presence known on the roof of the GCPD, but before Gordon can launch into his request, Batman stops him to introduce his new sidekick, Robin. Gordon is a bit unsettled by the idea of a child participating in a war on crime, but Batman, I think, cleverly reminds Gordon that no war excuses children. Gordon explains a top secret file was stolen from his office, a file no one should see, including Batman, and the perpetrator of this crime is none other than Two-Face. Gordon witnesses an example of Robin's readiness when the Boy Wonder launches off the roof to the streets below as the dynamic duo sets off to find Two-Face. Mark Waite smartly uses the opening scenes to accomplish several things. First, he demonstrates Dick's capabilities by doing all kinds of acrobatics to showing that he can leap from tall buildings without dying, which is a good thing and to also pre-answer the objections of the adults Batman regularly interacts with. Under any other circumstance, Gordon would think Batman is crazier than he already is by including a child in his adventures, but Robin shows Gordon he's ready for the job with a wink and a smile, so there's a lot of charm to his personality even when he's undertaking dangerous acrobatics. Batman and Robin set out to find Two-Face in the Batmobile. And they begin by tracking down an unsavory informant who could give them information about where to go. However, the dynamic duo doesn't realize until it's too late that their arrival is expected when one of Two-Face's henchmen unleashes a grenade attack on the speeding Batmobile. Armor keeps the vehicle safe, so that's not a problem. Batman spins the car around to chase the henchman down. Eager to help, Robin leaps out of the Batmobile to chase the henchman up a ladder to the rooftops above. Batman exits the vehicle soon after and warns Robin not to get ahead of himself, making blind jumps and running around dark corners to put himself in a dangerous situation. The chase scene is, to be honest, pretty standard stuff, but it's still very well done. During the chase, Batman struggles to stay ahead of Robin and hold him back from taking a fatal step. Robin is too eager and excited to listen. Their push-pull during the chase, coupled with Batman's frustration, clarifies and reinforces how Robin has the training, but not the experience or the maturity, which creates a layer of tension on an already dangerous mission. The henchman leads the dynamic duo to Two-Face's current hideout. Here, a lack of experience lands Robin in hot water when he charges into the room and steps on a pressure mine. Two-Face expected their arrival, but despite Batman's efforts to play into Harvey's duality, Two-Face says he only stole one file because a dangerous threat is coming for Gotham. A threat so big that both of his personas are in agreement about what to do to survive. Two-Face refuses to tell Batman what's in the file, but he does leave Batman with the knowledge that a new crime boss has planted the seeds to take over Gotham and he's been doing so for over a year. There is nothing the dynamic duo can do to stop him. 
We won't spoil the ending, but just of course, yes, the dynamic duo get out of their predicament with the pressure mines, and now they have a big mystery on their hands. So let's switch over to talk about the positives and negatives, starting with what's great about Batman and Robin Year One Number One. Mark Wade gives readers a super solid version of the dynamic duo's first outing with action, adventure, pitch-perfect dialogue, and foreshadowing of an intriguing threat on the horizon. Readers who've hungered for a more classic Batman will love this issue, especially when you consider where, where we've been in the last year with the main Batman title and Detective Comics, which are both terrible. This is a refreshing change of pace. Further, there isn't really a technical flaw that I can find anywhere in this comic. I mean, from front to back, it is well-written, well-drawn, we'll get to the art in a minute, but it's pretty solid all the way around. So let's talk about what's not great about Batman and Robin Year One Number One. At the risk of sounding like a grumpy old fuddy-duddy or somebody who's just got an anti-fun problem, I'm not sure why this comic exists. Mark Waid's central premise is solid, but it's pretty basic. There are dozens of comics detailing the first outing of the Dynamic Duel, albeit with a more Silver Age sensibility if you want to go back to the beginning. This is a very good comic but there's just nothing special about it so far, and there's no compelling reason for it to exist when the market is already saturated with too much Batman. It's good, it just doesn't stand out, and I can't really find a compelling reason for it to exist in the first place. All right, let's switch gears for a second and talk about the art. So we've got Chris Samney, who's responsible for pencils and inks. His style is a perfect match that blends the browns, grays, and blacks of, say, David Mazzucchelli's Batman Year One, which is kind of evocative of the name and the title, but it's got a little bit of a lighter spirit and tone of adventure. In short, the art looks like an old school comic, but with a little bit of a more of a modern feel, and it completely works for the script that Mark Waid has put together. Final thoughts for what we think about Batman and Robin Year One Number One. It's an excellent start for a series detailing the first outings of the dynamic duo. Mark Waid's pacing, dialogue, action, and central mystery have a classic Batman detective feel that we haven't seen in a really long time, and Chris Samney's art suits the story and time frame perfectly. That said, the story feels like stories we've already seen multiple times before, so it's unclear why DC decided to create yet another Batman title that just is getting lost in the mix. Therefore, Batman and Robin Year One Number One earns an 8.8 .8 out of 10. This issue is certainly one of the better Batman comics we've had in a while, but I don't know, it's just not special, so it doesn't really stand out and gets lost among all the other Batman titles floating around out there. But what do you think? Am I being too grumpy? Should I just be grateful for finally getting a well-written Batman comic? Leave a thumbs up if you think so, and drop a comment below with where you think this title fits on your must-have list. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out the variant covers and preview pages, and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.